Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Scott, and I'm going to talk to you today about automating third-party application updates and packaging in Config Manager and Engine. Um, standard slide to thank the sponsors for this week, um, Patch My PC being one of them. Um, I do have my own page. I wasn't cool enough to get my own icon, so I just used Ben's and put my face on it. Um, and then at the end of this, we will do a giveaway if anybody wants to enter for a ticket to the Workplace Ninja Summit in September, and that'll be a ticket and accommodation. And also have one of Ben's t-shirts, probably one of the last ones for this week to give away at the end as well to whoever wants it. And then we will do a Q&A at the end as well. Uh, okay, so this is just gonna go straight into a demo here. Um, so at Patch My PC, we integrate with Config Manager and Intune uh, to automate the packaging of third-party apps. Currently, we have 685 apps in our catalog. Um, and right now, in my lab here, I have no applications in Config Manager, and I have no applications in Intune. By the end of this, we'll have some. Um, we'll talk about the process of that, the customization, um, and some other bits and pieces. So that's pretty visible, okay. Um, so this is our publisher. It's super straightforward, super simple. Um, you set this up once, you add all your customizations, and then you leave it and you forget about it. We do the rest. So um, to keep with the theme of the week, we're going to publish um, VS Code, we're going to publish PowerShell Core, um, we're going to publish Power Toys as well. Um, so under Microsoft, uh, I'm just going to say, uh, we're going to do, where are we? PowerShell Core, 64-bit, we're going to do VS Code, 64-bit, uh, and we're going to do Power Toys as well. So I've selected those three applications. Now, if I right-click on those applications, I get some customization options here. That's a bad example. We'll do VS Code. Um, so I can add a custom pre-post script to that application. So um, if I've got a PowerShell script already written or a bat file or any other script um, for that matter, I can select that here as a pre-script. I can add in some arguments. I can add a post script and I can add some arguments. And then we'll package it up with the application and that will run on the client side pre or post installation. Uh, additionally, we have some other options here. So delete the desktop shortcut that those applications create. If it has one that we can delete, we'll do that. If it has a self-updater, we can disable that as well during installation. We can manage the logging for that application as well. So if it supports logging during install, we'll do verbose logging on the client side for you. And it's really handy for troubleshooting. Uh, and then lastly, we've got the option for MST transformation files and modifying the command line of the install. So we always pass the silent install and no reboot arguments for everything. So you don't get any unexpected reboots on the client side. But if you had some additional arguments like a license key or a language pack that the app supports, you can pass those in here and we'll package that up with the application or the update as well. We can also set these options at the top level or some of them anyway, if you want to do them globally. So removing the desktop shortcut, we can do that here and it'll tell us how many apps or updates support that option. The same for the self-updater, how many apps support that option? Zero, that's interesting. Let's try that again. 142, that's better. So there's 142 products that have a built-in self-updater that we can disable during installation. And then we can set that manage installation logging at the top level as well. Now these options apply across the board, so we can do those for updates, we can do them for config manager apps, Intune apps, and Intune updates, provided the application supports them. So I'll save the changes that I've got there. One other thing we can do here to get you started is we can scan your environment and see what applications exist in your environment. So I'll just connect to my own lab here and do a query, and it'll tell me that there's 288 apps in my environment that we can support. So from here, I can select all, hit OK, and I'll automatically enable them to be published into WSUS first, and then I can make that same change for Config Manager as well. On the right-hand side, I can see the device count of those apps, uh, um, where those apps exist. And we have a feature that's due out in a few weeks that will let me expand that out and see the list of devices um, itself rather than just the count of devices. And then I've got the product name and the vendor name as well. Um, so I've made my changes in the updates tab and those updates will publish to WSUS first. And the Config Manager Apps tab looks exactly the same. Those same customization options exist at the top level and the app level. Some other options here because we're in Config Manager Apps. But I don't want to make all those changes again manually, so I'll hit copy, I'll hit yes, 
that makes all those customizations for me. And then it's selected my applications under Microsoft as well. So if I expand this back out, we'll see we've got Power Toys, we've got VS Code, and we've got PowerShell Core. So I'll save my changes there. Exactly the same for Intune. Same options. We can do assignments here, though, because we're in Intune now. So if I click Manage Assignments, it will give me the option here to do required assignments, available assignments, or uninstall assignments. So um, here I could do rings for new versions of applications if I wanted to. So if I do my three groups here, just my phase one patching, phase two, and phase three, I've got my availability and my deadline. And these are just the same availability and deadline that you would set manually in Intune, creating an application yourself. Um, I can set that here. So for phase one, I want it as soon as possible. That's fine. Phase two, we'll do a deadline of three days. And then phase three, we want a, a deadline of seven days. So now, any time we publish a new version of any application, we'll automatically set those assignments on it with the availability and the deadline that you set in here. Alternatively, I can make it available in the company portal. Um, I can do all users. I can do my groups here. I can select a number of groups if I want to. For now, I'm going to say all users so that we can see these on the client side. Um, and I'll hit OK there. Now, I've set those at the top level, so those apply to everything. I can be more granular and set those assignments at the individual application level as well. So I can break that inheritance that I set and then add in custom assignments for these applications in here. But I just want the same applications as I set just a second ago. So we'll hit Copy. We've pulled over those customizations. We've pulled over our applications. Ben's here, late as usual. Uh, and then, so we've got Power Toys, we've got VS Code, and PowerShell Core, again. Same scan wizard here. We bring up the scan wizard, we hit Connect, we hit Query. And it'll query Intune this time. So there's considerably less applications in here because it's a, sm a small tenant. Um, but it works exactly the same way. We can select all, we can sort, products, vendor, and device count. But I don't want to enable these just now. Um, the main difference between Intune apps and Intune updates is just the assignments that we set on them. So I mentioned a minute ago, you can do your available or your required for your apps. For Intune updates, we'll copy over all our customization again. Um, but for our updates this time, we can only make our updates required on devices. So if we do manage assignments here, we no longer have the available option. So the general rule of thumb here is if you publish an app as available to your users, you publish the update as required to your devices. So you give your users the self-service option in the company portal. And then if they do decide to install something, you have the update required to their device. So we do the evaluation for that through PowerShell. The device will pull down that script. It will check to see, is, does the app exist? And if it does exist, is it a lower version than the one that's required? And if it meets that criteria, it will pull down and install the most recent version. If it doesn't meet that criteria, nothing happens. So that's the main difference between Intune apps and Intune updates there. So I'll save my changes. And we'll jump into the Sync Schedule tab and we'll just get these published now. So by default, it runs at 7 p.m. every day. You can change that if you want, um, daily, weekly, every two weeks, monthly. There is an option for hourly there, but we only do one catalog release per day usually, so there's no real need to run more than once per day. So I'll hit Run Publishing Service Sync here. We'll bring up the log file in a minute, but what the publisher will do now is it'll pull down the content from the vendor's website for those three applications. It'll customize them with those options that we set, any custom pre-post scripts, for example, package it, and push it into WSUS Config Manager and Intune. So if we bring up that log file, once it kicks off, we'll see it pull down that content, customize it. So there we go. Um, so we'll see in just a second, publishing to WSUS. So we've signed it, and now we're calling WSUS to publish that update. Now, WSUS is quite slow, so we'll leave this for a minute and we'll come back to it. Uh, we can do alerts as well. So alerting is quite important, I feel. Uh, so we'll do email reports and we'll do webhook notifications. Um, in a minute, we'll see the webhook, the, the webhook notifications for the three apps that we've just selected. But here's some examples here. So earlier today, we published an update for AutoHotKey. Uh, I can see the release notes for it. I can see the size, the severity, and the classification. And we do that for every app and every update that we publish, whether it's into Config Manager, WSUS, or Intune. Um, we should see here, uh, this is the demo lab that's running out at the booth just now, so it's publishing things right this second. 
So we see these in Teams in real time. We'll also send out uh, error messages as well. So if we've got an error message here, let's see. So um, similar format, engine update created failed for Cisco WebEx. We link out the same information, the release notes, the size, fair to classification. We also link out the error message as well. And this is quite a good one. So anytime there's a new version of an application uh, from the vendor, we test that internally. We'll run it through VirusTotal and we'll make sure that it's clean. We'll also record the hash value of that file. And we record that on our side. And then in your environment, when the publisher runs and pulls down that new version, it'll check the hash of that file that it pulls down against the hash that we have on record. And if they don't match, it just won't publish that version because it's not the same version that we tested internally. Um, if that happens, it does get written out to the log file. You can reach out to us for support on that. The usual reason for that is it's just a newer version than we've tested internally. And we'll do that catalog release later that day to include that new version. And then the next time your publisher syncs, that error shouldn't reoccur. In the nearly a year that I've been here, I've never seen that hash validation fail because the file's been compromised in any way. It's always just been a newer version. The email report gives you the same information, just in a report format, in an email format. Let me show bot content here. Um, so this is a fairly small one, but we'll see the full one when it comes through. Um, have we got a full one here, actually? These are all relatively small. Let me bring this out. and show bot content because it's outlook. Um, so similar information, um, the apps that were created, any assignments that were set, and any applications that were updated, applications created. And I'll show you the full report when that comes through, but this is just an idea of what it would look like in your environment. Let me minimize this. So if we bring back up that log file now, we should hopefully see some more action here. Are we still publishing to WSUS? Yes, okay. We'll come back to that when we get to the engine part. Um, in the advanced tab here, there's just some more useful stuff. So the local content repo is quite important. Um, I mentioned that the publisher pulls down from the vendor's websites directly. That's true in most cases. There's a couple of things that that doesn't happen for, like Java is behind a login. We can't do that for you. So we'll notify you anytime there's a new version. You pull down that installer, you place it in the local content repository, and we'll pull that in from there. And we'll do all the same stuff. We'll customize it, we'll package it, we'll publish it, we'll set assignments on it. Um, and then you can deploy that to your clients as if we had just downloaded it from the internet. Um, last couple of things in here in this tab. Um, we'll download content to your temp directory. When we're done with it, we'll delete it. If that ha hash validation fails, we delete the file immediately. Otherwise, we keep hold of that file until we publish into all the platforms that you selected, and then we remove it. Um, there's some options in here for reporting. We do offer SSRS dashboard reports and Power BI dashboard dashboard reports, they're free, and you can use them at any time. And they just work off information that you provide them for the Power BI dashboards, and then the SSRS ones just query your environment. And um, there's some backup and restore options in here. Product export, if we tick all these and hit export, it'll just give us a nice CSV of everything that you've got selected within the publisher. And these last two options here just put the publisher into in-tune only mode. Um, lastly, just information on the publisher itself. Current version is 2160, and the latest available stable version is the same. Um, anytime the publisher finishes running, it will self-update. If there is a new version available, you can disable that. Don't recommend that, though. Um, those, those new versions contain bug fixes, um, new features that we've been working on, that kind of thing. And then we've got preview builds as well. And we'll use preview builds mainly to push out fixes for bugs um, to customers. Preview builds are fully supported um, by us. So there's no issue with that either. And then just some links out to some pages on our website. So let's see where we're at. Are we still publishing to WSUS? We are. I shouldn't have published to WSUS. That was a bad idea, Scott. While we wait on that, Let's go into the PowerShell part of this. So we should hopefully have, we don't yet, because we're still publishing to WSUS. It's the worst thing, just do Intune. <laughs> <laughs> ben agrees. Um, so for Config Manager and for Intune, we'll do all the detection scripts for you. And we'll generate them for each new version anytime there is one. Um, so you don't have to do those yourself. We maintain those for you. Um, the engine ones are a bit weird, and I'll show you that when they get there. Um, but the config manager ones are relatively readable. Um, so we're publishing an application just now, so we should have a PowerShell script in just a minute. Here we go. So the PowerToys detection script, 
for bringing that up here. You may have seen this earlier if you saw the View Talk at the coffee break, um, but this is what our detection script looks like. Um, we have a whole lot of um, parameters in here. I don't know why I'm looking up there. A whole lot of parameters in here uh, that we, we use for each application, so apps to search, apps to avoid, the MSI code, um, a whole lot of things in here. Uh, and then if we scroll a bit further down, we get the actual script itself. Um, and we'll, we'll just maintain this for you. So this saves you even more time because you don't have to do this yourself. Uh, but then, if we look at the engine one, when it appears, um, it's just, it's awful. Um, where are we at? So this is taking a bit longer than... It's doing engine now. That's a good point. So we can see here we're now uploading to engine. And it'll take a minute. It'll do one app at a time, and then one update at a time. But it'll get there, and we'll see those in just a second. While we'll wait on that, if we go back into Config Manager, and we hit Refresh now, We've got our three applications that we didn't have a minute ago. Uh, if we just look at PowerShell Core as an example, we go in here and we do properties. Into the Software Center tab, we've populated all the information that would show in the Software Center on the client side. Um, the name, the architecture, any relevant URLs, the logo, any keywords that are for that, and then the description as well. And that's what shows in the Software Center on the client side. And I'll show you that in just a second. Let me deploy these first. Uh, I'll just run this handy PowerShell script. Uh, run with PowerShell is not there. It's just gone. Okay. Uh, function. Are you going to do it? It's doing it. It's doing it. So we should see now, if we refresh this again, we've got some deployments coming in now. Is the last one going to deploy? Just thinking about it. There we go. So we jump into the client side now and just wait for this to refresh. We should see when it pulls down these applications. Let's just force it because I'm impatient. Uh, PowerShell scripts are handy. Well, let's see. SCCM sync run. So that will kick off a full sync on the client side, and we should see, there we go. So we've got our apps on the client side now, we have the Config Manager client side. So all that stuff we saw, we've got the, power, we've got the logo, the name, the, the description, any relevant URLs, and we'll keep them up to date for each new version of that application as well, should anything change. Um, we get all that information directly from the vendor. Um, so now I can just do install on that application, and it'll pull that down from Config Manager and install that on your client. Uh, for Intune, we'll see similar, we'll see a similar um, setup for the, the way it looks. So if we go into the Intune portal, I should hopefully see if we've published something. There we go. So we've got those apps in Intune now. So we're going to PowerShell Core, this does the same example, properties. Uh, we've got that same name, version, architecture, description, logo, the URLs, um, the install and uninstall commands, patch my PC dash script runner, which is another internal tool that we maintain. And that just coordinates everything on the client side. It does the install, um, the uninstall, any detection, all the customizations. Um, notifications is a good one. We never talked about notifications. I'll come back to that. Um, it's not an agent in any way. It's just our wrapper for the application. And if we scroll down, we've got uh, the detection rules here. So we've got use a custom detection script. And that's the same detection script that we looked at for Config Manager, but it just looks a lot worse. Um, so if we do detection scripts for Intune, what one did we open up? We opened up the Power Toys one. So this is what the Power Toys one looks like for Config Manager. It's nice, it's readable. If we open up the Power Toys one for Intune, it is not readable. Let's do word wrap. Word wrap. So, same script, same thing. Looks awful. Um, have fun deciphering that. Uh, I've been here for a year and I have no idea what this does. Um, but yeah, so we will do the detection scripts for you. Um, for for engine, the reason it's done like this is there is a policy size limit um, at the client side for for engine managed devices. Uh, and it's relatively small, it's four meg, there or thereabouts, um, and that's enforced by Microsoft. So we, we, we would have loved for them to look like this for Intune, but 
the more apps you publish, the more of these scripts that are there. And if they're all required on the client, when the client pulls down policy, these scripts add to that policy. Um, and if it hits that limit, the client just stops and it won't pull down any applications at all. Um, we can probably publish about 600 apps-ish um, before you'll hit that limit. Updates have two scripts rather than one, so it's round about half that. And if you decide to sign these scripts within our publisher, you're probably talking half that again, because signing all the scripts makes them considerably larger. Um, so on the client side, uh, on the Intune client side, let's just restart my Intune client so that it will get policy because I'm impatient as well. We'll see the same thing as we see here, but in the company portal, we've got the nice icons and we'll see that in just a minute. But we'll come back to uh, notifications, which I forgot about. So we can notify your users to say there's a new version of software available. We want you to install it. So if we just look at Power Toys as an example, we've got managed conflicting processes here. So the default action is just to perform the installation. And that's fine for most things. Most things will install silently in the background without any user disruption. Some additional options, we can kill the process immediately uh, should the, the application be open and the update becomes available. We can skip the install entirely if that process is in use, or we can notify the user to close that application. We get some customization options there. The timeout is how long the user has to close that application or um, either close the application or snooze the update, sorry. Um, we can prevent the end users from opening that while it's updating. I don't really recommend that option. Um, it causes us more issues than it solves. Um, and then the notification policy. If you've got focus assist running, it will just suppress that notification. So we can override that here and just do always show the notification. The federal policy, do you want to allow your users to click snooze or do you just want them to close the application? I'm going to say yes, and I'm just going to say three times as an example. Um, and then we'll do default settings, and in here we can customize the look and feel. So we've got a banner image there that we populate automatically, but you can change that to be your company branding. And we'll just do patch my PCs, the organization name. And then we'll do preview. And in the bottom right hand corner, we get a nice notification. This is what we show on the client side when your user tries to, or an update starts on the user side, um, and the application is running. So that's what would show. We'll see the list of conflicting applications there. We can choose close all and update, and that'll just kill whatever processes are listed out in the conflicting apps. Or we can hit snooze update, and that'll just snooze until the next time that device checks in. So we'll just close that for now because it's not going to do anything. We'll hit OK. So you can do that at the per app level. You could do it at all products if you want to, but I wouldn't recommend that because you will just spam your users with notifications, and nobody really wants that. Um, let me just bring back up my engine client now that it's restarted. And we should see that same behavior on the client side for Intune. When it connects, we're putting a lot of faith in the Wi-Fi here. We'll just get about a second to get, it, get itself together. And we should see the company portal start up. Just thinking about it. Apps. So there we go. Same three applications in the company portal. Same information, same icon, same description. These are all just set to available to my users, and I can install these now. If I had them deployed as required, they wouldn't show in the software, the company portal. They would just install on the client side. But I've made these available to give them that self-service option. But I've got the updates required. So if I did install Visual Studio Code now, any time a new version became available, and we would publish it to Intune, and the client would just pull it down the next time it evaluates and install. So you don't have to worry about keeping uh, your end users keeping those up to date. Um, we should also have that email report now. Let me just jump back in and see that full email report now that we're done syncing. Uh, and we'll unblock the content again. So the full email report. Um, at the top here, you've got your updates. So these are what we've published into WSUS. You've got your applications, and those are what we've published into Config Manager. And then we've got our Intune tenant here. So we also do multi-tenancy for MSPs. So if you had multiple tenants configured in the publisher, we would list this out per tenant. Um, so we can see the exact same information there, Power Toys, all available users as the assignment. Same for VS Code, same for PowerShell Core. If there was any CVEs in those versions, we would list those out here and link out to the relevant information on those. Um, and on that 
that, that subject actually, let's look at a newish feature that Ben wrote. Um, so under yeah, you, um, under engine updates, we've got dynamic assignments. So let me just select everything here as an example. So we'll select everything and apply. At the top level, we'll do dynamic assignments. And if you're familiar with Config Manager, you'll be familiar with ADRs, hopefully. This is like ADRs for Engine. So we'll just do test one, test one, not test dash, uh, and then test one again, just as the description. So does it have a CVE? What's the severity and what's the update classification? So yes, it has a CVE. Uh, we'll do important and critical, and we'll do update classification, critical and security. We'll hit OK, and we'll hit Preview, and this will take, oh no, I've done it straight away. So this looks at our catalog for anything that meets that criteria. So has it got a CVE? Yes. Is it critical or important? Yes. And then is it update classification, critical or security? And we can see here, this is everything in our catalog right now uh, that meets that criteria. So once we've got our criteria set, we can just do a manage, and we'll just make this required to all devices. Hit OK. So now any time the publisher runs, it'll run that same query. And if it finds anything that meets that criteria, it'll just publish it and assign it to all devices. So then your devices will pull down. Should they have that application installed and it requires that new version, they'll pull down and install that new version. And you just you don't have to worry about it. We just do all that for you. Um, do, I have, do, you know, do I have anything else? Um, that's a really high level overview. Um, just now, in the catalogue, we do have 675, 685 applications. Um, the catalogue is what you license, basically, and the publisher. There's, there's no restrictions to the applications based on your license. You, you license the publisher and you get the full catalogue. Um, let me think. The applications in the catalog, that's a good point. Um, everything that's in there is pretty much from customer requests. So um, if there's something that's missing from the catalog, or like an application, or there's a feature that you would like that you think would be really useful, ask for it. Um, pretty much everything that we do comes from customer requests. Um, at the end of the day, it's our customers that use the application. So if we can do more for them, then fantastic. Um, and then we put all that in our roadmap. Um, and in here, you can see everything that we're working on just now. Um, anything that's got a yellow icon next to it, which is pretty much everything really came from a customer request. Um, and then lastly, um, just the free trial. Um, everything that we've looked at, I know it's a really high level, but everything we looked at is available in our trial. And that's a fully functional trial. It runs for 30 days by default, but we can extend that if, if need be. Um, there's no issue with that at all. Um, that's Pretty much that. Does anybody have any questions before we move on to the last bit? So I was wondering, um, how would you see if you create, um, wanted to create like, uh, an um, or maintain an application that's, that's updated by a patch entity but not publicly available to other customers? So if, can you somehow create like a private application or an internal application that you want to deploy to, let's say, a thousand? Do you mean like an in-house application? Yeah. So not yet. Um, that's happening. I don't, I'm not sure when, but it's it's the goal. Um, hopefully, the end of this year, we'll have the ability, because we do it internally. We add apps to the catalog. So we're aiming to give customers the ability to do that themselves as well and maintain their own kind of internal catalog. Um, but it's not there yet. Good question. Um, so per device per year uh, is the, the licensing model. Um, there's three license types. Enterprise is for WSUS updates only. If I bring back up the publisher here, actually. Um, so the enterprise license gives you access to that updates tab. And we publish those updates to WSUS, and then you can use them in Config Manager, deploy them using ADRs or manually if you want to. Um, Intune Essentials, as the name suggests, is Intune only. So you get your apps and your Intune updates. Um, 
there is some features that you don't get with that, um, like the um, filtering for engine, so we can do your filters in the publisher, um, and we can do those dynamic assignments. Those aren't available in the engine essentials license. Those become available under Enterprise Plus. Um, and the Enterprise Plus license gives you access to everything in the publisher. That's your full functionality. Um, the prices here are the prices if you buy direct from us. Um, there is educational discounts available, bulk license discounts available, that kind of thing. Or you can buy from a reseller and their prices may vary. Um, we do also have minimum pricing. So if you, if your device count is under, I think it's 700 devices, there or thereabouts, um, the minimum price would apply and that's per year. Um, so yeah. $3.50 per device per year. Um, some competitors are per month, we're just per year. Um, any other questions? So, what about uh, BIOS and driver updates? Are you planning to support that? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I think, uh, not, no, not right now. Um, DJAM, if you know DJAM, has talked about it a couple of times and it has some ideas, but it's just talk just now. Okay. Uh, are the patches in Vesus uh, patch on, on the same uh, company name, like patch my PC, or are they? So when, when we publish the WSUS, everything shows us from patch my PC. So we, we have our own product within, in fact, I'll just show you. Why is that? Because other vendors are awful. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Uh, administration. So we just look under products in my software update point. You'll just see patch my PC. Uh, products. So if we just minimize Microsoft, you've just got patch my PC. Um, whereas Avante, as an example, would have one product per application. Um, we just have one product. So everything would show. In fact, I can show you that as well. If we go into the software library. There is a reason for that, though. And so the reason that we put everything under Patch My PC is because WSOP has a hard limit of 100 custom third-party vendors. So if you have more than 100 vendors, then your WSOP environment will break. So well, I've learned something new today as well. So we can see their vendor, Patch My PC. Any last questions? <laughs> Do you have any uh, way to access the reports by command line, PowerShell, or? The reports? Yeah, I mean, if you can get the compliance reports from the console, patch my PC. As, as, as we, we got the report in the email mm -hmm. that you showed us. Is mm -hmm. there any way to, to retrieve that report? So we, uh, or the, the email report specifically? Not right now. I mean, we do the, this is the webhook or the email report just now. Um, but that's an interesting idea. Um, come and speak to us at the booth afterwards. Yeah. Um, anything else? You mentioned logging is client side, right? The client side logging. So, you, yeah, go. Can you do installation logs in uh, like, I don't know, in Azure? Um, Not right now. Well, by by no. So the the patch my PC script runner would write that log to the client side, um, and that's per application. If you want to copy it out of there, then by all means do so, but by default, we'll just write it to the client side. Ben, do you want to elaborate on that? Oh, yeah, no, there's just one potential way you could do that. If you had a file share set up and your devices were mapped to that, then potentially you could bounce the, like, a failing install to a central location, but functionally it's the same. If you have a file share, you can move that. So, and, and there. No, we do those ourselves. So they're done by Patch My PC Script Runner. When it runs on the client side, it generates that notification. Only because we have to support Windows 7. Can you also uh, support uh, creating a custom action such as uh, opening a change request when a new application uh, comes in? So uh, that a change is open and uh, the Patch My PC publisher waits until the change is approved? Uh, not, not at this point in time, no. But I that's a good idea. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, let me bring back up this. So, uh, okay. So, first things first. We have a T-shirt. Does anybody want one of Ben's last T-shirts? 
first person to raise their hand. There you go. Um, okay, so last thing, we'll give away this ticket. Um, now, it is flights and, um, not flights, it's the ticket and the hotel stay for the Workplace Ninja Conference in September in Switzerland. So, um, you're more than welcome to enter this, just please only enter if you can actually attend or get the flights. Um, so, if you want to go to swagit.io on your phones just now, if you want to enter, put that code in, we'll give you a couple minutes, and then we'll pick somebody, and then you'll get the ticket, and you'll get your hotel stay for the conference, and then that's us. Can you describe what the event is? Oh, now you're asking. Um, I just get given the ticket to give away. Dave's going, though. Yeah, do you want to explain? What's that? What are the conferences? I guess I shouldn't say it's the best conference in Europe <laughs> right now. But you know, if you're in management and IT and security and Azure, it's a conference of about 300 people in a beautiful city in Switzerland. I haven't been to yet, but I've seen the pictures. Uh, and the uh, middle of September, so like the 12th or 14th. Um, I know 80 speakers and sessions are already lined up, so it's pretty good. Oh yeah, we're host we're hosting a, a big ass party as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we I think we wrote a check for seventy thousand US dollars for the party. Right. So yeah, if there's any reason to go, that's it, right? <laughs> I've got two entrants. They're coming in now. Stop! I was looking for one. <laughs> <laughs> I have three phones, I'm entering all of them. I'm going to set a time of three minutes. Yeah, well, give it to 22, four, yeah, 22 on the clock. Okay. Yeah. Or 1340, I guess. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right, fine. But yeah, while we're waiting on that, any last questions um, from anybody about anything? Doesn't need to be patched by PC, you know, ask us anything. Ben will answer. <laughs> So you can manage the multiple tenants within the publisher. I don't have it configured just now, but if you come to the booth, I can show you. Um, but you can manage currently up to 10 tenants within the publisher, and you can make all your customizations per tenant. And then when you hit save and the publisher runs, it'll just churn through the tenants and publish all the apps and, and things that you've selected. Uh, any, any other questions? So you said that you package up some pages for the, the installation of the pop up and so on. Does that mean that the path of the application change? No. The client? So the, the, the installer of... So we don't change the, the vendor's installer in any way. Um, we use Patch My PC Script Runner and we wrap everything up. And the, but the, the basics of it is it just runs the vendor's installer. So the installer doesn't change. Okay. Yeah, the hash check is against the installation. Yeah. 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 Anything else? Cool. So you typically run the client. So you start the client. I assume that's a front end for service. So this, so for, for Config Manager and WSUS, you would want this installed in your top level software update point. Um, for Intune, Intune only, you could run it anywhere really. Um, if there's more than one admin accessing it, just have it on a central device. It could be a server, it could be a Windows 10 device, you could host that in, on a VM in Azure. It's entirely up to you. Um, for now, there's a SaaS solution in the works. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry? Yeah. Um, I guess we'll just draw it now. Why not? Where's my web browser gone? Okay, 16 entrants. That's great. Right. Just hit start. David, Jan. Oh, I thought that was picking it straight away. Picking, picking, picking. <laughs> Cool. So, come and see me. Uh
Yeah, we'll just grab a screenshot of this. Yeah, come and see me at the booth, um, and we'll get that sorted. Um, but yeah, that's everything I've got for you. Thank you for your time.